amidst the celestial dance of planets in our solar system. The Earth finds itself sandwiched between Mars and Venus. But Venus shouldn't be as scorching hot as it is. Venus should be warm, but not 900 degrees Fahrenheit. During the 1960s, Venus was often referred to as a planet from hell in NASA records. A time that also coincided with the space race between the USA and the Soviets. The moon was a primary focus for the West. However, in the Soviet Union, they saw things differently. The USSR was unyielding, continuing to send missions to Venus despite its obvious unlivable conditions. Venus eats metal, and within minutes it will begin to melt down and crush any spacecraft audacious enough to set foot on its unrelenting surface. The Soviets also launched an unusually high number of missions to Venus. Between 1961 and 1983, they sent 28 spacecraft. It's also important to remember that during this time, landing craft on other worlds was still in its infancy. But despite that, the Soviets went on to achieve several successful landings. But why? NASA recently turned its gaze onto Venus, following a potential discovery of life in 2021. Detecting a biosignature gas called phosphine in the thick Venus atmosphere, and a lot of it. Ranging from 5 to 20 parts per billion, although those numbers might seem small, that's thousands of times more than what it is in Earth's atmosphere. After much analysis by Dr. William Baines, a biochemist at MIT, and his team of scientists, assert that life is the only explanation for the chemical's abundance. Often called Earth's twin, Venus is roughly the same mass as Earth. Many scientists think that Venus was once covered in water, and possessed an atmosphere where life as we know it could have flourished, a thought almost impossible when we gaze at Venus today. So after half a century of mystery, did the Soviet Union intentionally hide the first sight of an alien connection from the world? On Earth we know our evolutionary tale. From simple cellular life forms to modern man, evolving alongside the composition of our planet and its inhabitants. In Chernobyl, the home of the world's worst nuclear disaster, Experts expected the area to become a wasteland, devoid of life. However, life persisted, surrounding wildlife from insects, rodents and animals alike still carry those scars in their DNA. But not only just that, they've evolved to withstand the high levels of radiation, and that was within only 40 years. Just like that famous quote from Jurassic Park, life will find a way. What if life on Venus did just that? The Soviet's Venera 13 mission survived for an incredible 127 minutes. It captured recently declassified high resolution images of Venus's surface. The first was a disc shaped creature that seemed to respond to changes in heat or pressure. The second object was visible during the first 13 minutes of the mission. It seemed to be a vertically elongated black object, disappearing from the images taken in the 27th and 36th minute. But the most intriguing discovery was a scorpion-like creature spotted around the 90th minute of the mission. With our current technology, it's challenging to get more than a passing glimpse of what lies within Venus's thick atmosphere as probes descend through the clouds. Neil deGrasse Tyson believes that the clues to life will always lie within a planet's atmosphere. And now we know that Venus's atmosphere has biochemical signatures for life. We also know the surface may not be as barren as it may seem. 
So what if life simply evolved, transitioning from being on Venus's surface to living in the clouds? One thing is for sure, as we look out into the vastness of space, the biggest question of the universe may lie closer than we originally thought.